Greetings everyone, again it's Kenji here and welcome to Life of Clay. This time we will going to scout the Australian Thorny Devil Lizard, Moloch Horridus, first of our 4 legged reptile collections. And if you like more of these scouting tutorials, please consider subscribing and at the same time turn on that notification bell icon, so you will be notified whenever a new video is up. So come bring the clay on and let's be careful with those thorns. And that's the usual intro of my process, sketching must be done first. It will help me to create a 3D model of this lizard inside my brain, since it's a bit intricate and complex type of subject to tackle with. And for the armature, I use 1mm stainless steel wires, bend the tip for the head along with those for the legs. Then bond the wires together using two parts, epoxy and a string. Applying more epoxy to the armature and bulk it with aluminum foil. Set aside and let the epoxy to cure. Meanwhile, let's prepare and make lots of thorns in different sizes and forms using some recycled Sculpey Premo clay. In terms of durability and slight flexibility, Premo is what I preferred so far. Roll a thin noodle of clay then form into conical thorns, making various sizes and shapes so you may have a lot to choose from. After that, I bake them over my sand bedding to avoid deforming. Now let's start sculpting the head. Cover it with a thin sheet of clay and start shaping it based on the reference until we get the basic shape. The Thorny Devil Moloch Horridus, also known commonly as the Mountain Devil, Thorny Lizard, Thorny Dragon, and Moloch, is a species of lizard in the family Agamidae. The names given to this lizard reflect its appearance, with those two large horned scales on its head resembles those with dragon or devil. The name Moloch was used for a deity of the ancient Near East, usually depicted as a hideous beast. The species is endemic to Australia, living in the arid scrubland and desert that covers most of central Australia. It is the sole species in the genus Moloch. It grows up to 8.3 inches in total length including tail, with females generally larger than males. The thorny devil is covered in hard, rather sharp spines that dissuade attacks by predators by making it difficult to swallow. When threatened by other animals, it lowers its head between its front legs and then presents its false head. Predators that consume the thorny devil include the wild birds and guanas. Thorny devil's favorite snack are the ants. It can eat thousands of them in a day. In the dry desert, this lizard collects moisture by the condensation of dew that forms on its skin in the early morning as it begins to warm outside. Then the dew is channeled to its mouth in hygroscopic grooves between its spines. During rainfalls, capillary action allows the thorny devil to absorb water from all over its body that even absorb water from a damp sand and this is their main source of water intake. The female thorny devil lays a clutch of 3 to 10 eggs between September and December. She puts this in a nest burrow about 30 cm underground and the eggs hatch after about 3 to 4 months. I add preliminary texture now so I can see where to position each thorn. Using an explorer tool, make a hole and insert each thorn in proper sizes and arrangements to achieve a nearly accurate replica. Touching the texture and add his eyes. Cover its head with plastic film and shape its mouth. Adding more tiny thorns and poke holes for his nostril. And then cure it with heat gun. Next is sculpting his body, covering it with clay and shape it based on the reference. A 
again, adding preliminary texture and continue forming the body till lightness is achieved. And then repair the texture as I go on. Pre-sculpting the base of his legs and adding texture on them as well. And now it's time to add those thorns around his body using different sizes and observing their proper arrangements. After all the body thorns are set, cure it with heat gun and proceed in sculpting his legs. I coat the wires with epoxy resin and tissue paper strips then dip in the Arabian sand. This method gives tooth to the smooth wires so that the clay will cling on it steadily during sculpting. I decided to sculpt all the foot first. I find them easy to form this way, then adding them later. I roll out a thin noodle of clay and form each toes, making their tip pointy and bonding each base together. I made 5 toes for the front legs and 4 for its hind. Why 4? Because the fifth toe will be added later. Lay each foot on a piece of tile and add some more pieces of clay. Position the leg wires over them and start bonding the clay to the wire. And fix all the toes, making their claws curved down. And after that, cure them using heat gun. Now let's cover the legs with these pieces of rolled clay, making incision halfway through and start shaping them. I trim the excess until I got the final shape and then textured them. I added small bumps around the legs for the tiny thorns base and to add additional texture. Now adding the fifth toes of its hind legs and then cure them with heat gun. Next is sculpting its false head. Using stainless wire, epoxy and foil, form into ball just like a tiny lollipop. Then cover it with clay, make hole on both sides and insert two thorns. Seal the seam, add texture, and then cure it using heat gun. Mm -hmm. 
drill the back of its neck for the false head. Trim off the excess wire of the false head and attach it to the lizard's neck to check if it fits. And yes, it is. Let us now proceed in sculpting its tail, forming a noodle of clay, making a halfway through incision and wrap to the tail wire. Though Sculpey Premo is durable, I am still careful in handling such delicate sculpture, so I wrap tissue paper around its body to avoid direct pressure on the thorns and to avoid breakage. Add preliminary texture and start studding the tail with small sizes of thorns. And now that everything is done, let's do the final baking to cure the clay completely. And it's painting time. I first coat it with gray acrylic paint as primer. To reach those deep crevices, airbrushing is the best way to paint it. Next is painting it with a mix of titanium white, burnt sienna, and yellow ochre as the base color. Applying wash paint on some areas using the mix of burnt sienna, burnt amber, coffee brown, and raw sienna. painting those map-like patterns using pure burnt sienna. Mix of titanium white and bash yellow for the yellow coloration on its back. Mix of burnt sienna, bright red, and bash yellow to add orange coloration on the patterns. painting the outline of each patterns and his eyes with a mix of burnt sienna and black. Painting the middle line on its back along with some of its thorns with titanium white and burnt sienna mix. Finally, sealing it with ultra matte varnish. And then adding touch of gloss varnish on his eyes. And there he is, the tiny monster looking thorny devil lizard is finally done. I'm so glad I made it, it's my dream sculpture for a very long time. Hope you also like it and did enjoy the whole process. If you like more sculpting videos like this one, again, reminding you to subscribe and turn on the notification bell icon so you won't miss out any of my sculpting videos. Your support guys are very much appreciated. Thank you again for watching and may you have a great day everyone.